Howdy. My name is Nonat, and Pathfinder 2nd Edition is not a simple game. As a player, you have so many options available to you that it's incredibly easy to slip up and make a quick mistake. Now, these mistakes won't often burn your session to the ground or ruin your campaign, but they still can lower the overall quality of things. Especially if you keep making these mistakes multiple times, they tend to add up and really slow down the entire experience. Well, I'm here today to talk about the five most common mistakes players make in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And if you think you haven't made any of these mistakes, you're lying. So let's go ahead and talk about these and how to fix them. Number one, attacking too many times. I'm gonna go ahead and get this one out of the way. If you watched my top five GM mistakes, you know exactly what I'm gonna say because this is the exact same mistake. Stop flailing and just attacking three times in a row. The third attack statistically will almost always miss, or worse, critically miss and allow some enemies to get an attack back on you. Instead, take a step back, look at your whole character sheet, and think about their other skills. If you have even trained proficiency in deception, intimidation, stealth, arcana, occultism, nature, or religion, you already have another option for that third action. Instead of attacking a third time, start your turn by demoralizing or fainting against the target. This can inflict a penalty that will then make your other two attacks even more accurate and thus even more likely to critically hit. If you're at range, take cover to increase your AC or even use the hide action and then make a ranged attack because then your target will be flat-footed, again, making it even more accurate. And if you have any four of the knowledge-based skills, or even a specific lore skill, recall knowledge on your foes. This is really tough to get in the habit of because it feels like you're wasting an action. But trust me, when you recall knowledge and your GM lets you know of a monster's weakness, or an immunity, or even which of their saving throws are the lowest, your spellcasters will thank you. On top of just making your other actions more likely to succeed, these are also just way more interesting and can actually change the flow of combat. Demoralized enemies may actually run away, or you might recall knowledge on a creature that makes you want to keep it alive to get more information from it. When it comes to combat encounters, skills are just as important as attack rolls, and if you choose to ignore your character's skills, you are choosing to ignore an entire facet of Pathfinder's deep gameplay. Number 2. Not knowing what to do on your turn. This doesn't apply to just Pathfinder. No matter what tabletop game or even a board game you're playing, if you don't know what you're going to do on your turn, you're going to slow everything down. But Boy, does this stand out in Pathfinder. Let's be honest, your character sheet is a big document. Between background, ancestry feats, skill feats, general feats, class feats, attack rolls, skills, and spells, there's no way you cannot think about it, have your turn come up and go, oh yeah, I instantly know what I'm gonna do. Even at level 1, there's enough options that it will take you a solid 30 seconds to a minute to decide what you're going to do without any forethought. For this reason, you really should have your turn planned out before it comes up, or at the very least, a skeleton of what you want to do. If you're a spellcaster, pick out at least a target that you want to cast a spell on. You don't necessarily need to decide on which spell right away, but just pick a target. Or do the opposite. You're going to cast Magic Missile, and then once it's your turn, that's when you'll decide who you're going to shoot. This problem is why a lot of first sessions of Pathfinder 2nd Edition really tend to drag out. People don't know how the game works, let alone their own character, and so it does make every turn take multiple minutes as they need reaffirmation of what rules do and what their feats function like. This is totally excusable if you're new to the game or just started playing a new character, but after a few sessions, the excuse starts to get weaker. Contrary to popular belief, combat does not need to last two hours in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, but it sometimes does, and I'm not innocent in all of this. When my fighter oracle eldritch archer's turn comes up and I haven't put any forethought into it, the game grinds to a halt because I need to decide between uh, attacking multiple times or casting an eldritch shot or casting one of my oracle spells or using a revelation spell or maybe I should switch weapons or should I demoralize and 
it just stops the game. And I feel awful when I do it, and I start panicking and, like, quickly looking through my character sheet just trying to figure out what to do. There's no denying that Pathfinder's combat is much more strategically heavy than some other tabletop RPGs, and so it does require that extra amount of thought that you really should put in before your turn comes around. Speaking of which, it is your turn. What are you going to do? Now remember, you did fail your will save against my charm effect, so you do need to scroll down, like the video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. Oh, but don't worry, you still have one action left, so if you want to leave a comment, you can. I'll wait. Editor, don't cut this out. I want them to feel awkward. Number three. Focusing too much on your character sheet. In a rules-heavy game like Pathfinder, this might be the easiest mistake to make. I mean, you spent two hours meticulously selecting feats and skills and equipment for this character, so why shouldn't you want to look for opportunities to use those specific abilities you picked out? Well, that's because it takes you out of the character. You're no longer playing a living, breathing person reacting to the world around them, you're playing a video game character whose A button picks a pocket. I was stuck in this mindset so long with my fighter. Oh, whose pocket can I pick? Oh, can I use my intimidating glare on someone? Maybe if I use my shadow mark, I can follow that guy. And I was thinking about the world from my character sheet's point of view, not my character's point of view. I was so focused on what I had feats for that I forgot that it's a role-playing game and you can do anything you want to do. It's really easy to get so caught up with the numbers and words in front of you that you forget your character is supposed to be a person. So here's my simple advice on the topic. If you're not in combat, try not to look at your sheet too often. Simply get in the mind of your character and react to things. And then, when something comes up, like you're picking someone's pocket or trying to coerce somebody, then look at your character sheet and say, oh, I have something that applies here. Rather than looking at the pickpocket feet and thinking, who can I pickpocket? Just pickpocket someone when it feels right and then realize, oh yeah, I have the skill feat that makes me better at this. This keeps my in-character roleplay so much more focused and the entire experience feels much more natural and satisfying rather than mechanical and vaguely forced. This keeps my in-character role-playing much more focused, and I have a greater time because my character gets to react naturally rather than looking for a mechanical reason to do something. Number four, not using conditions. Use conditions. You have access to so many different conditions, and some you might not even know about. Athletics lets you grab or trip. Intimidation lets you inflict frightened. Uh, deception lets you faint and make them flat-footed. On top of that, there are so many different class feats and various spells that can just inflict so many different conditions on an opponent and completely sway the combat in your favor. Now I get it. Sacrificing that sweet, sweet minus 10 third attack is really hard to do, and even harder than that, spending basically your whole turn casting a spell just to inflict a condition can feel unsatisfying. But let me tell you how my game last night went. Our group of level 10 adventurers were facing a level 11 young Umbral Dragon. This should have been a pretty tough encounter for us. The dragon went first and got super unlucky, missing me with both of its attacks. We then proceeded to inflict it with restrained, immobilized, slowed, prone, persistent bleed damage, persistent acid damage, and flat-footed. This all happened over the course of one round, and on the following round we dealt so much damage to this thing that it gave up and let us pass. Sure, we could have just kept hitting it to try to do more damage, I guess, but our attacks would have been less accurate, and the dragon would have been able to fight back much more. As it was, it was stuck on its stomach with only two actions per turn, so all it could do was lay there and spout out one use of its breath weapon as we continued to beat it down. Conditions do so much more than it seems. The frightened condition on paper doesn't seem amazing. Minus one until the end of its next turn whoop de doo But put that into perspective. 
That is minus one to armor class, minus one to attack rolls, and minus one to all saving throws, not just until the end of your turn, but also for each of your allies going before that creature in initiative. Putting that into perspective, the level three spell Heroism grants one person plus one to their attack rolls and skill checks and stuff for 10 minutes. You can just use Demoralize to effectively give your entire party a plus one to hit this thing for a full round. It doesn't cost a spell slot and you can do it over and over again as long as you don't crit fail. I cannot tell you how many times me or my allies have just barely hit or even barely gotten a crit because its armor class was reduced by one or two points. As I said in the first tip too, this just makes the fight more interesting. The GM gets to describe much more immersive <laughs> encounters than you hit him. Okay, you hit him again, and now he hits you. But now you get situations like the Blood Demon shockingly recoils in fear as you assert your dominance over it with your intimidation roll. Shut up, bird. I am intimidating. <laughs> Shut up! It's a great feeling as a player, and it's tons of fun for your GM. Number five, wasting or skipping actions. So this is an interesting mistake. Not everyone suffers from this one, and it's much less common than the other four on this list, but I do still see it a decent amount of times, and that is players skipping one or more actions or just wasting them for no real reason. Now, I don't mean wasting them as in playing suboptimally or anything like that. No, 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 no. I'm talking about players who just do something so their turn will be over, or straight up say, nah, I don't even need to use that third action. I'm, I'm good. I pass. The biggest issue with this is that it usually happens when the player is not invested in the current encounter, or just doesn't really want to play at that moment. They don't really care what's happening, they don't care what they're doing, so they just skip it to get combat over faster. Skipping an action is incredibly common with spellcasters. They'll spend two action to cast their fireball or whatever, and then they don't know what to do with that third action, so they just skip it. They don't want to do anything else. They don't want to reposition or use any skill actions, like demoralize. Wasting an action comes mostly common with martial characters, who, even though they just missed their second attack after rolling a 19, they still go for that third attack for that 5% chance to roll a natural 20, I guess. At the risk of sounding redundant, I refer to the previous tip. Look at your skills, intimidate something, faint for a flat-footed condition, or just take cover to increase your armor class. There's gotta be somewhere you can position yourself better, potentially for your following turn. Cast Guidance on someone, or shield yourself with those cantrips. You'd be surprised how many one-action options are available to every character. The main reason I mention this as a mistake is because it can lower the morale of everyone else at your table. When you just skip half of your turn, the other players take notice. They realize you're not invested and you don't care what's going on right now, and disinterest is contagious. Sure, in character, the other players may not act any different, but as people, hanging out with their friends, seeing someone not having fun or just not caring, really brings the entire mood down, and you know, if they don't care, why should I care too? And then the GM can often feel offended, because they worked hard to assemble this encounter, to assemble this campaign, and you just not caring about it enough to really play the game can come across as incredibly rude. So keep those one action options in mind. Even if you think they won't do much for you or your character or even really benefit you much, they still add to the narrative. They still keep you playing the game and it will just make everyone else at the table have a better time. When you cast the shield cantrip on yourself rather than skipping the action, people are much more likely to stay immersed and invested in what's going on in the story. Trust me, your table will thank you. And those are my five most common player mistakes I've seen people make in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and the mistakes that I've made most of myself. But you gotta be honest down in the comments. How many of these have you made? No shame if you've made them, just try to learn from them. There's nothing wrong with making a mistake as long as you strive to improve it. 
I do also like to emphasize that these mistakes are not always necessarily just for your sake. I do think they'll improve your experience, but more than that, they'll improve your group's experience at the table. If everybody learns from these mistakes, then combats will move smoother, roleplay will be more immersive and more engaging, and the entire experience will be better for everyone, GM included. Thanks so much for watching. I want to give a massive shout out to my patrons scrolling up the side of the screen here. If you would like to also donate generously and support the channel, you can do so using the link in the description, just like these fantastic people. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. We are so close to that 10k point. This is actually going up at the end of the week, so it's possible we'll already be there. If so, yay! If not, oh. <laughs> I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, no nat ones.